Well, we have come to the end of another week. And boy, this week was challenging. I was attacked by ants on my Monday show. Tuesday, I didn't have an incident. But Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, no, Wednesday and Thursday, made up for it. I, my knee was dislocated. A bee stung me on my finger. I had a splitting headache from my detox program. And I have a toothache for two days running. And today is celebration day. What do I have to celebrate? I'm still alive. I'm still kicking. And so today we are going to do rule number four. Welcome to www.celebratelife.me. That means every day you're going to have the opportunity of celebrating life with me. And we're coming to you every single day from 12 noon until 1 p.m. For those of you down in Japan, it's going to be 12 midnight until 1 a.m. And those of you over there in London, it is going to be six hours ahead. So whenever you tune in with us, live or on our recorded videos, you will have a great time celebrating on Fridays. Fridays is our celebrating day. So I just want to tell you that you have to tune in, tune in, log on. I keep saying tune in, but it's log on to www.reggae2reggae.com and voila, you'll be able to patch in on all of our programs and also to see the past programs under our video link. Now, as we start again, I am going to give you the four rules of celebrate life dot me. Rule number one, know where you're going. Rule number two, know your driver. Rule number three, pay as you enter. Rule number four is celebrate the journey. Enjoy the ride. And that's what life is all about. Yesterday, we did rule number three. And the day before, we did rule number three. And every Wednesday and Thursday, we will do rule number three. Because that is your contribution. Every Monday, it will be rule number one. Every Tuesday, it will be rule number two. Every Wednesday and Thursday, it will be rule number three. And every Friday, it will be rule number four, which is today. And you are doing Celebrate Life with me. And so you will be celebrating all my failures, all my trials, all my problems, but all the good things that happen right here in Jamaica. Remember, we are going to have some special Jamaicans jam icons on the weekend because I'm going to be having two guests. Remember, Saturday is Shalom Shabbat for the Saturday worshippers. And Sunday will be our Lord's Day broadcast where we will be celebrating the first day of the week with those who worship on Sunday. And how come I'm doing both? Because I worship on both days. I keep Sabbath, and I also worship on Sunday. So tune in with us, and if not, then log on and let us see you joining with us to celebrate the Saturday, or the Shabbat, or Sabbath, and the Sunday. So into rule number four, which is our most important rule, but guess what? You cannot celebrate unless you have one, two, and three under your belt. So make sure that you have it under your belt. Rule number four, celebrate 
the journey. And the journey is one where you know where you're going, where you know your driver, and where you have paid when you entered. Not at the end, but at the beginning. And yesterday we just really had a wonderful time as we looked at all the different things that we are going to reap and gain at the end. At the end. And I just want to just rehearse another concept that I got last night, or was it this morning? Oh, big up NCU FM. I was listening this morning to a program called um, Word from Heaven, right? Big up everybody on NCU FM. Remember that you're doing a wonderful job. On the program, this gentleman was saying that, and I wrote it down here. Uh, uh, I wrote it down here. I know why I did that, because I want to show you something. If you do only what is easy, you will have a hard life. If you do what is hard, you will have an easy life. And that is a concept of pay as you enter. Because if you concentrate on always doing what is hard at the beginning, then when it's reaping time, you just chill, cool out, and you are able to enjoy the rewards and the benefits of everything that you've engaged in. So remember, if you do only what is easy, you are going to have a hard life. If you do what is hard, you are going to have an easy life. And guess what? I paid all my dues early up front. So now I have an easy life where I can celebrate every day and every moment of every day. Okay? So come on the journey with me and let us move ahead. Now, I have been looking at my operations manual here. And yesterday, my sister says to me, how come you're looking into the operations manual and when you hold it up, I say, tell star on the front. I said, well, this is a diary, compliment of Telstar, thank you Telstar, but I take stuff out of my operations man manual and I write it down in this diary because guess what, any time you want to remember something and make it stick in your head, then you have to write it down. Remember what you spoke about? Write the vision, make it plain so that those who see it can run with it and the first person to see it and to read it is the person who wrote it down. Moi. And that's how I remind myself over and over and over. Every dream, every vision, dear dream, impossible, imaginate chance, I write them down. And then I cut out pictures and paste them up on the wall. And then I make sketches of things that I would like to achieve or have. You want to see so many houses I have drawn. Ooh. I don't know how long it's going to take to build those houses, but it's going to come to pass because I write it down, I sketch it out, I eyeball it, and I just make that impression stick in my mind so that when it comes time to actually bring it to pass, easy stuff. And that's how we need to go. So the things that you may consider hard at the beginning, will make you have an easy life. And the things that you consider easy or you only want to do the easy stuff, down the road you're going to have a hard life. So guess what? You can change at any time. You can decide that you're going to celebrate even the journey of doing the hard things. And how do you do that? I want to give you a little tip. First of all, from the first uh, 20 years of my working life, I held three jobs. I went from my regular job, which was 8 to 4.30 at the bank, and then I went from there to Dulles Business College, where I taught for 16 years, from 5 to 8. And then I left that and we went to another job from 9 to 12, where I was helping some persons 
uh, do monitor advertisements on the radio. That was way back in the 1960s. So at 12 o'clock, I would jump into my little car. I had a convertible Sprite and drive all the way from Harperview Road to Harborview, where I used to live, in the convertible Sprite at 12 o'clock in the 60s. <laughs> I don't know if I would advise that at this point, but that's what I did. And all of the hard things that I did during those 20 years has paid up so that I can now relax and enjoy the benefits and the rewards of all the hard labor that I put in. But more important than that, I have all of this experience to share with you, which brings me back to my promise. Remember my promise? This is a band talking about the Pledge of Jamaica. And this is a pledge that every Jamaican is supposed to make. Ta ta na ta na ta na ta na I promise. And this time I want you to also notice my nails. Ta -na -na -na. My nails? Aren't they beautiful? Well, my dear, do you remember the last time that I spoke to you about nails? I was talking about my wonderful manicurist and pedicurist who always operated a, a natural shop, meaning that she doesn't do any acrylics, so you don't have any bad smells when you go in there. Secondly, she doesn't have um, all the chatter around because, you know, sometimes you go to the hairdresser and the manicurist and it's pure gossip. She has the most beautiful music playing in the background. Hi, BZ. Well, this morning I went to her because she said the last time she saw me on television and she zeroed in on her fingers, she says, oh my goodness, I hope nobody knows I am her manicures and pedicures. I said, well, I'm going to absolve you because I had not gone to her in months. In fact, the pedicure had grown until I only had a little line at the top. I had my own French manicure <laughs> because it had grown all out. So I'm going to recommend these beautiful hands and the person who did them. Because anytime you're going to do a job, you must make sure you have the best person to do it. Don't just do a slap dash thing. And whatever you do must be good for your health. What is the whole point of closeting yourself at the hairdressers or the manicurists and breathing in all those toxic chemicals into your hair, into your nails, and of course, straight into your pores and into your bloodstream. Remember we spoke about the fact that everything that goes on your skin, including your scalp, is going to be absorbed in through the pores, into your bloodstream, and carried all around your body. So next time you decide that you're going to put on some wonderful hand cream, remember, use coconut oil, the real stuff, the stuff that our grandmothers grew up on, because the fat is the best thing out. Well, guess who I met this morning? When I went to BZ, that's my Manny and Pedicure, and she does all sorts of other things as well. She has a full spa, right? And she's right on off of Hope Road. I met her mother. Her mother was 85 years old. She lives in Buffalo, and she took the bus to town to come and visit her daughter. 85 years old, strong as an ox. Wonderful. I met her today and as I shook her hand and I rubbed my hand on her arm. No one has a muscle tone. Soon as I leave busy and come up, I jump on the rebound and start doing me bouncing because I said, Why this lady at 85 have such good muscle tone? I have to keep mine going. So Monday, we are going to do our show from the rebounder chair. 
outside in my backyard and you will see how you too can get wonderful muscle tone all for time. Not just to look good, but to feel good and to be healthy. So remember today we are celebrating and we are celebrating every aspect of life. But we always have to look back at what allows us to celebrate. What should our attitude be when we face those situations that make us feel that we don't have anything to celebrate about? Yesterday we spoke about the gift of illness, the gift of problems, the gift of challenges, the gift of crisis. Because these situations impel us to stop. That's the purpose of sickness. That's the purpose of crisis. That's the purpose for all the bang around that happened to us. We need to stop. And when we stop, what do we need to do? Think. We must stop. We must think. What has brought us to this place? What has precipitated this crisis? And when we decide that that is how we are going to approach the challenges that face us, then we come back to our four rules. One, know where you're going. Is this crisis a part of the process to your end, to the place where you want to end up? Two, know your driver. Who is it that is driving you, propelling you, to go in one direction or another. We all have, you know, they're using my hands a lot. Yes, ma'am, because <laughs> they look nice. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> you know that we have to know who the driver is. Because once we engage the driver, then we know we are going to get to that expected end. Remember, our driver had a plan for us. A plan not to hurt us or to harm us, but to give us a wonderful future to look forward to and to give us sure success and prosperity. Would you like to go that route? It's your choice. Your choice as to the route that you're going to travel. Because you have to choose the right driver. Why on earth would you want a drunk man to drive your vehicle? Eh? Or somebody who is mentally or physically challenged. If you saw a paraplegic, would you want them to drive your vehicle? Or if you saw somebody who is not connected, would you want them to drive your vehicle? That's why I use that driver, my creator. Not only is he the best driver in the world, but he has given me all the instructions, right? He has given me all the instructions in the instruction manual. And so every time I come to a place where I'm not sure exactly what I'm going to do, I just look up plan for the troubleshooting or look up for something else, whatever it is. If I want to find out instructions, there is one place to go. The operations manual. And all of us have an operations manual. It's for you to decide if you want to consult it or not. So one of the organizations that I have is called Destiny Research and Development and Training. And so anything you want researched, I can find it in the operations manual and send it to you. So if you want to find out if X is in the operation manual, or Y is in there. Does the manual say anything about hmm? Then send us an email, and we will look it up for you, and we will tell you exactly what your creator intended for that situation. Back to the sickness thing, the crisis and the sickness. Back to that. One of the things that I have to remind you of is the fact that in any situation of crisis, there's a reason, there's a purpose. Remember, you 
were created with a purpose. And your purpose was to be the solution to a big problem that would occur during your lifetime and to which you are the only solution. Because our creator doesn't make any duplicates. You are unique. You are placed in a country where you will be able to develop all your characteristics. You are placed in an environment. You are exposed to the sort of things that you need to keep this thing going. All of this is put together strategically so that you can fulfill what you have. And then you have every resource that you need available to you. It's all about asking. Yesterday we spoke about ASK and the acronym of ASK. Ask, seek, and rock. That means you have to be persistent. And if you have an end in view, I don't care what is happening in the middle, how many valleys and mountains and golly have to drop down in. It does not matter how many valleys you have fallen in. You can get out because you have the expected end. Remember, we're talking about capstone. The capstone is where you look at the finished product. This is why you need pictures and images. When you look at the finished product all the time, then you keep your altitude focused where you're going. And it doesn't matter where you are, whether you're down in the bottom or you're up on the top you keep the focus. And once you keep that focus, you will get there. There is nothing that will prevent you from getting there once you keep your focus. So, keep your focus. Regard every crisis, every illness, every problem, every challenge as a stepping stone. Because once you regard it that way, it will be a stepping stone. Celebrate every aspect of everything that happens to you. So let's just look and see the contribution that is made by the other three rules. Because you cannot celebrate unless you are embracing the four-step program. Let's go over them again. One, know where you're going. Two, know your driver. Three, pay as you enter. <laughs> that's the most important one. In fact, that's the only one you have anything to do with. The others are just given to you. And then four, celebrate. And remember, in life, it's a choice. Life is about a choice. Remember, every time you face a situation, you have a choice. Which brings me to a concept that I want to really explore today. It is about taking responsibility. Right? One. A lot of people say to me, Why my husband drive me up the wall? Impossible. Unless you are in a car and he is the driver and he's driving up the wall. Well, guess what? You still have an option. You can jump out of the car. You think I'm joking? I have jumped out of motor vehicles, moving over motor vehicles on three occasions. The first one, I was a young teenager and I was going to school one day and my sister was driving me and she was going to work. And I remember as soon as I pull out down the road, we were late. And I remember that I leave the ingredients for the cake I was supposed to bake in my cooking class. And I was not going to school up and say, stop, stop, stop the car. I have to go back. She says, we're late. I cannot turn back. Right? And I decide, I am not going to school without the things for the cooking class. So you know what I do? I just opened the door, threw out my bag, and then jump out. I landed on my shoulder, scraped off the whole of the blouse, and did a little forward roll, pop a lick. I was in gymnastics. I knew how to land. 
and I just take up my bag and walk back home. Why not arrive at home with blood on my shoulder? My mother said, Child, what happened? Did you have an accident? And I said, No, mommy. My sister wouldn't stop and let me out of the car. Maybe she would have stopped tonight. But I was so anxious. I decided to take things into my own hands. And she was livid, my mother. Right? But guess what? I'm not advising you to do that, but I am trying to explain a point that you have a choice. If somebody holds a gun to your head and says, do this or else I shoot you, you have a choice. You have to decide, is this more important to me? And I'm here to tell you, when you make the choice to do what is right, you are going to have salvation. That's how God made the whole world. When you stick up for the right thing, you might get shot, but you might die, right? And so out of this situation, you will encourage other people to have courage. So there's always an upside to every situation. So remember, you have a choice. How do you get your choices? Yesterday we did a sequence. We have thoughts, and the thoughts determine our feelings. Our feelings will determine what we say because we're going to express them. And what we say goes into our air gate, affects our neuro. Remember, we spoke about NLP, neuro linguistic programming. When you program your mind with your linguistics or your words, so you can program your mind with your words. So if you want to change your action, one of the ways is programming your mind with your words. Because it works. Guess what? You shall have what you say. Life and death are in the power of the tongue. And they that love it will eat the fruit of it. And I mentioned about Every time you say a word, you are creating something. You are planting a seed. And make sure that the only seeds you plant in your children's lives are good seeds. So never ever mention to them anything they have done wrong as a warning. You are to use whatever they have done wrong as a stepping stone to how they should do it right. It's the same thing when you have a kid who is distracted by doing something that's wrong. For instance, the child wants to go to the store, or they want to pick up a razor, or they want to pick up the scissors. All you need to do is substitute it with something that is good for them. It's called behavior modification in psychology. Right? You modify the behavior by repeating the good behavior after you have done the bad behavior behavior modification. So if, for instance, your child has come and said something to you and you really thought they were extremely rude and you slap them across the face, don't talk to your mother like that. Must have respect. And you realize that that's not an appropriate response, then do you want to modify your behavior? and their behavior, the next process is what you should take. One, apologize that your action was inappropriate. Don't blame them and say, oh, you make me lick you. Because you must take responsibility for your actions. If you are an adult, but if you're still a child, then it means you're going to continue to behave like a child. Blaming somebody else. You did it. You caused it. Mm -mm. One of the marks of an adult is that we take responsibility, full responsibility, for our actions. So, here it is, you have this situation, slap a child, and you want to know how to modify your behavior. After you have done it wrong, then you know Apologize, repeat it correctly and say, I'm sorry dear, I really should not have slapped you. What I should have said is, what 
on earth would make you speak to me like that? What happened to speak today? Who troubled you? What did the teacher say? Because let me tell you something. Anybody who bites you, it's not because of what you did, you know. It's just that you were the last person there. Huh? <laughs> right. So remember, when you see somebody react badly to you, you are not the cause. It's just that you heard the air when, you know, the whole thing full up and they can't take anymore. Understand? So then you must pull back and make the choices that are in your best interest. And remember, you know, yes, let me talk about it. Every choice that is in your best interest is also in the best interest of the other party. And so that is how you can assess if you're doing it correctly. Every good choice is a win-win situation. Oops, I love all my nails look. Nicey, mm. you gotta take care of yourselves, you know. But when you can't take care of yourself, don't make it make you down because you have to always decide on your priorities. And what is most important must always come first, even if the nails got left out for two months. Time will come when they're back on street. Thank you, baby. Okay, so you understand how much to modify your behavior? You're going to turn around, tell your child that you have done it incorrectly and that you are not going to do it correctly. So, thank you. We need to know that all around we have opportunities to modify our behavior. So if it's another situation that you get yourself into, you can also modify your behavior. It doesn't matter how many times you do it incorrectly. If you get into the pattern of correcting it immediately after, then it will be easier and it will take a shorter time for your behavior to be modified. A lot of people do it this way and it does not work. <sighs> I shouldn't have done that. Next time, I'm not going to do it. Guess what? Next time, you shall do it wrong. Because the only way you develop what we call muscle memory, where you do things automatically, is by developing the muscle. So if you're accustomed to doing it, bow. Then the next time you're going to bow, because your muscles have gotten more memory. But if you change that slap on the face to a hug, Every time you do it wrong, you hug, you hug, you hug. Then afterwards, the hugging muscles will get more work than the slapping muscles. And that's how you modify your behavior, by doing it correctly after you have done it incorrectly. Doing, not saying. Doing, not saying. Because mouth make fit out. In other words, our mouths were made to speak. And speaking may affect your action, but it is when you have taken the responsibility of doing the thing correctly, recognizing that nobody can make you do anything. Everybody has their own choices and decisions to make. And you are responsible. That is a mark of an adult when you take responsibility for your own actions. So, moving right along, I wanted to share with you another situation. A lot of times, we go along life and we recognize that we're not sure where we're going, we can always go back to the operations manual when we're not sure where we're going. We have to put things t together. I'm looking for my iPad. But in the absence of that, I am just going to review the three, the three um, rules that we have left. One, know where you're going. Two, know your driver. Three, Pay as you enter. Four, celebrate life. And today, I want you to go out and celebrate life. 
every aspect of your life. And remember, you can do that by going to reggaetoreggae.com because apart from my program, we have all the programs that showcase what's good about Jamaica. And if there is a suggestion that you have for us to do what you want to celebrate, just give us an email. And then we will be ready to put it on and showcase it for you. So see you tomorrow from 12 to 1. OK, it is 1 p.m. and we take a break. That's a note from my producer. So we're going to. Since the first public demonstration of radio by Nikola Tesla in 1893, no one ever thought of putting the two hours of music together until we created reggae to reggaecom No, as break. No, no, no. I don't know that as break. I know it's as time. Okay. Right. Okay. Okay. Right. So I was totally confused. Okay. All right. How long is that thing? How long is that? Five minutes, two minutes, three minutes, thirty seconds. How long is that? Five minutes, two minutes. What is that? Thirty seconds now. What kind of thing that man? Okay, we're back. That was a short ad, but I'm sure you got the information, right? Today, we are, we are so start again. All right, here we go. Okay, here we go. Got a little chance to fix up my clothes and freshen up a little bit, and I'm back with you because. I just love to interact with people, as you can see, right? I am on top of the world when I have others to interact with. It's my thing. It's what I do best. It's what I love to do. It's what energizes me. And so today, we are going to continue looking at how to celebrate life today. Now, you know something? At the end of the week, when we say, thank God it's Friday, a lot of people think that, oh, work is over, stand now to enjoy. But as you can see, during the whole of this week, we have been enjoying every day. And the objective of this program, www.celebratelife.me, is that we can enjoy every moment of every day. And that's what we need to do. We have to have an attitude that whatever happens, we can find the good out of it. And so we need always to review the rules. Because anytime you find that you're not enjoying life, something is wrong along the line. So let's see that what, what, what can go wrong in the three rules that will prevent you from enjoying your life every moment of every day. One, some people don't know where they're going. So I have to continue telling persons that they need to write down their dreams and visions. And today I want to just concentrate on the health area. Eh? Because as I was telling you about Beezy earlier on and her mom who was 85 years old, who is 85 years old, I said to her, but oh my goodness, I said, how come you're so strong and going? It's the foundation, she said. She said, I had the right food, the right everything as a child. And it's not because she had a lot of money, but it's just because she had coconut oil, and only coconut oil. For our hair, she has beautiful hair. And for her skin, outside and for inside oh my goodness you'll cook everything with coconut oil 
you eat coconut every day, you drink coconut water, everything was out of the earth. And remember we did that program on immunology and we spoke about the five something of life. Right, we spoke about air, water, sun, earth foods, and PEMX. Air, most important. Water, next important. Sun, next important. Earth foods, next important. And PEMX. What are PEMX? Pulse electromagnetic fields. And that is the energy that comes from the earth, way down in the middle of the earth. That energy is just always pulsing, coming up. And if you want to get some, take off your shoes, walk on the earth, voila! Pulse electromagnetic fields will be. But guess what? We have those fields all over. We get the same energy from the sun, we get the same energy from our water, and we get the same energy from our fresh airs. And of course, we get the same energy from our earth foods. But remember, if you do not know what your objective is and where you are going with your health, then you're going to do it wrong. Because a lot of people say, you know, when I get older, I want to make sure I don't get diabetes, cardiovascular issues, that is cholesterol and high blood pressure and blah, 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 and things with the blood and the heart. I want to make sure that I don't have any pulmonary stuff. That is to do with the lungs. So a lot of people have sinus and wheezing and pea fever and asthma and so on. Oh, you got to keep that going. Then, of course, you have a digestive stuff. Oh, my goodness. Those are the people who have constipation, diarrhea, Crohn's disease, irritable bowel syndrome, bloatedness, flatulence. Oh my goodness, there are so many conditions. Cancer of the colon, cancer of the small intestines, cancer of the liver, cancer of the, all of them are related to digestive diseases. If you want to plan for your digestion, then you have to have a plan. You can't sit down and guzzle down all the poisons and put it into your body and then decide that that is going to mean that you are going to have a good future. No. So you must know where you're going. Have an objective from you are a teenager that I, when I grow up, I don't want to have to be paying at the end. I'm going to pay at the beginning by putting in a good foundation and eating the right things and so on. But you know, I don't want to just zero in on the food, you know, because everybody thinks that food can cure them. Food cannot cure you. The five elements, remember the word now, elements, the five elements of life are ear, fresh ear, water, pure water, Sunshine, plenty of it. Earth foods and PEMS. The PEMS you get from the other four. However, the order, see the order here? One, two, three, four. Number four is the least important. But everybody thinks that they can use number four and cure themselves. Impossible. Do you know that you can live without number four? Well, I'm going to introduce you to a sect of persons called breatharians. Breatharians. They live on breathing. Breath only. They have a liquid juice once a month to keep the digestive tract going. I am not recommending this. I am just telling you about it so that you can understand the importance of sunshine, air, and water, because that's what they live on. They usually live way up in the mountains, high altitudes, and all day they do three things. They sit, and they breathe. 
deep breathe in and out. So they are constantly expelling all the bad air from their lungs and constantly taking in good air. How can you do that? Stick up your nose close to a tree now. Anytime you go in the day close to a tree, the tree is breathing out good air. They call it oxygen. And as it brings out the good air, you just take it in. But this morning, when I came back from my thing, I went outside and I have my bones back chair stuck up right over the bean, under the bean vine. And so I had these beans hanging up over my face and over my head. And I just bounced. And I just breathed in and I just exchanged all, all the arm thing. You know, so my tooth is gone. My tooth ache is gone. I had four glasses of water. I had a glass of my master cleanser. You remember the one that I showed you on the show? I had uh, 12 ounces of clean juice, two tablespoons of lime juice, and a quarter teaspoon of cayenne powder. I drank that, and that came in and started to cleanse all the poisons in my cell out of the body. So the water, the master cleanser, and now the toothache is gone. Because guess what? Every pain is a result of inflammation or infection and sometimes the inflammation is caused by the infection but it's an air that boof lick boom and it swell up and it hurt you or there is something infected under there that causes swelling and the pain so anyway you take it the best way to get rid of pain is get rid of the source of the pain and the best way to get rid of those things is to wash it out wash it out get the lymphatic system moving and pumping and you just drink water 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 it dilutes it and then it takes off the body Ta -da! so remember when you're thinking about your health you need to understand that one the fresh air is most important then two the water is next important and then three the sunshine is very important then you concentrate on the food. Everybody wants to eat themselves. People used to come into our shops. We had a chain of restaurants, health stores, and called Earl's Juice Party. And people would come in and say, what good for this? What juice I must take for this? What should I do for this? What must I eat for that? Now, if they asked somebody else, they would recommend something. But when they came and asked me, I would just give them a stony face. And I would say, excuse me, the only way to get rid of something that is wrong with you is to find out what contributed to it and stop doing it. It's called eliminate. Stop bringing into your system the things that cause your problems. It's a simple thing. If you do not use that root, any other intervention will be temporary and negative in the long run because a lot of people take food to stop their symptoms and it's successful and so they say oh it worked it's same thing with medication take a vitamin c when you have a short throat it's going to work but guess what after it has worked then all the extra vitamin C that you have just taken is going to your liver. It makes your urine turn colors. And then after that, it is causing an imbalance, a chemical imbalance. And the chemical imbalance that it causes is called your neurotransmitters. That is what carries information from one place to the other in your body, the chemicals. And that is what is going to go now to your big toe to tell your big toe that it must swell up and have gout. So you need to understand that it is when you imbalance your chemicals that you're going to have a problem. So why do you want to put more stuff in there to cause more imbalance? When there is a simple solution, stop what you're doing to make yourself sick. And that's more than 50% of a cure. The other part that you have to look at 
is once you stop bringing in the bad stuff, then you have to know go and say, well, look how much bad stuff is inside. And now you have to look at getting it out. How do you get it out? That's why I started this program way back, almost two weeks ago, with the Master Cleanser. And remember, you can email us and get that information or go back to that program where we covered it. So I have been on my Master Cleanser now for 11 days, 12 days, probably. Yes, 11, 12 days. And I'm telling you, I have lost 7 to 10 pounds at luxury. Sometimes it's 10, sometimes it's 7. I have lost 7 to 10 days. And 7, seven to 10 hours. 7 to 10 pounds. Right, I've lost 7 to 10 pounds. And so it has come out of the cells, the cells of all the organs. So now all my organs are pumping up, da -da 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 -da, working wonderfully well. So remember, the four elements that we are most concerned about are fresh air, told you about having good oxygen and deep breathing. Two, water. I told you about water, 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 water that washes and dilutes all the toxins in the system. Three, sunshine. I didn't tell you much about that. You see the sunshine? Well, I'm here to tell you that the sunshine gives you vitamins, minerals, protein, chlorophyll, and enzymes. Bet you didn't know that. You get all the nutrients that you need to be healthy from the sun. Everybody tell you that all you get from the sun is vitamin D and skin, skin cancer. The only way the sun gives you skin cancer is if something wrong with your skin and it's deficient in the nutrition that it needs to process the sun. The sun is a healing element and it gives you vitamins, minerals, protein, chlorophyll and enzymes. So, we're going to take a little break again as we do a little business and I'll be right back to tell you how you need to put all of this together so that you can celebrate life on reggae to reggae dot com. Since the first public demonstration of radio by Nikola Tesla in 1893, no one ever thought of putting the two hours of music together until we created reggae to reggaecom On reggae to reggaecom we encourage our listeners with an inclusive, intelligent, and innovative alternative media experience. You are up. Wonderful. It's great to be back with you. And today we're doing Celebrate Life, rule number four. And this is how we can celebrate every moment of every day of our life by understanding that you need to know the driver, you need to know your destination, you need to pay as you enter, and you need to just enjoy the ride. It doesn't matter what happens to you, you need to have an attitude of, I am going to get the best out of this. I am not going to back down, and I am not going to blame anybody else. I am going to take responsibility and I am going to make the choices that are in my best interest, which are also in the best interest of everybody else. And so we always have a win-win situation. Isn't that wonderful to live like that? But guess what? You have to pay your dues, right? You have to put in the hard work first, and then you can really, really sail and enjoy Go for the ride. But if you haven't started doing that yet, you can start now. You can fast forward it, you know. 
It means that you're going to put in a whole heap of hard work. And then you can sit back for the rest of the ride. Right? You can also enjoy the hard work while you're putting in. Because you need to just always pull out the positive out of every situation. There is no situation that does not have positive. Even out of death comes life. Even out of loss comes gain. And so we need to be able to look for those things, appreciate those things, pull those things out. That's what reggae to reggae is all about. We used to do only reggae music for two years. But now we have decided that we're going to share with the whole world everything that's good about Jamaica. So that if you want to join us, welcome to Jamaica. And if you would like to do it for yourself where you are, you can embrace these principles because they are international principles. And part of the purpose of our creator making Jamaica is that we will make a contribution to the whole human race. So we are going to end our program today with the pledge. We are all going to come, all oh, Jamaicans everywhere. Every time you hear this pledge, you stand up and you put your hand over your heart as a jam icon. And you say this pledge with all your strength and vigor and vitality and all the passion that you can put out. That's what we need to do. Because every time we say it, remember what I spoke about, words going into the ear gate and affecting the brain and the neuro. Right. We need to understand that this is what it's going to make. So, cover your mouth. That means put a clamp on your mouth. Mm. Don't speak anything that is negative to those around you. Don't speak anything that is negative to yourself. Why have a hard time doing that, you know? Sometimes before I put on my clothes and I look in the mirror, I said, Sure, what a lot of things hanging down. You look like your mother. But guess what? I have it all on the cover, on the wraps. Never expose the things that you don't like about yourself or your country. What would you think if I came out here? with all the things hanging down that I don't like. Eh? That would never do. I cover up and I make sure I only show my good points. Same way for Jamaica. Make sure you cover all the bad things that happen in our country. Stop talking about it. I don't want to hear. When I'm in company and people start saying, oh boy, look at the girl, look at this. You know what I say? Excuse me, you need to go to the bathroom. I need to go to the bathroom and let out what they just put into my spirit. Right? I am not taking it each in because it's going to affect me and how I think and how I feel. So guess what? If I want to celebrate every moment of every day, it's not that I put in my head in, in the sand. It is that I have chosen what I want to think about, what I want to talk about, and it's my choice because guess what? It works. For me, and eventually, you know what it does? It creates my own reality. A reality that I want, a reality that I like, a reality that I enjoy. What enjoyment is there talking about the crime rate? What enjoyment is there? There's only enjoyment in talking about the beautiful, wonderful things of Jamaica. And that's what I'm going to encourage you to do. And if you're not a Jamaican, that's how you are to. That's the attitude you should have towards your own country. You should think that your country is the best country in the world. And you should always be celebrating what is good about your country. Just like us here in Jamaica, we need to always celebrate what is good about Jamaica. So, let's look at our pledge. And I want to do a little analysis on each phrase. The Jamaican National Pledge. And I have to sort of read it because I was not in school when we used to have to say this every day. These youngsters, they just rattle it out. But when I was in school, we didn't have a pledge. Well, primary school. 
But after I was in high school for a few years, Jamaica got independence. And we did not yet put the pledge in a, into the part of the school curriculum. So I have to read it sometime. So before God and all mankind, remember we talk about know your driver? You must know your driver. I pledge the love and loyalty of my heart. Love is always looking for what is best in, for everybody, for the other party as well as for yourself. The loyalty of your heart. I don't care whether you do something good or you do something bad. I will be loyal to this country, to my family, to my organization that I belong to, anything that I have anything to do with. I will retain my loyalty. If I think that I have to speak bad about that thing, left the place. You cannot be drawing salary from somebody's business and talking bad about the business. If you can't talk good about the business, go somewhere else. Wonderful. Love and loyalty of your heart. The wisdom and courage of my mind. Because that is where the wisdom and the courage comes from. When you think good, lofty thoughts, then you have courage to carry them out. Don't you remember where the wisdom comes from? Dun, 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 dun. The operations manual. Wisdom and courage of my mind. The strength and vigor of my body. Mm -hmm. You've got to keep your body in good health. How you got strength and vigor if you abuse your body and put all sorts of junk into it? Check another program for that. In the service of my fellow citizens. Oops. That must be my objective. Not for myself alone, but everybody must benefit from it. I promise to stand up for justice, brotherhood, and peace. I told you how to get shot alone, to work diligently and creatively. All the wonderful ideas that I have, try and do them, okay? Creatively, to think generously and honestly. So that Jamaica may, under God, increase in beauty, fellowship, and prosperity, and play her part in advancing the welfare of the whole human race. And today I am reading from the Hands Across Jamaica map. It's a bookmark. And it has the motto, the anthem, and the pledge. But the most important thing on it is the affirmation at the bottom. And I'm going to read that. I believe I am the best thing that God has created for this time for the purpose of building Jamaica and the world. That's what we're going to have to end with. Because you must believe. You must know like you know like you know that you are the best that has been created for this time for the advancement of Jamaica and the whole wide world. So I want you to stand before the mirror and I want you to say, I am the best thing that God has created for this time. And no better go back and talk about the good old days. The good old days are ill. The best days are yet ahead. And I am excited that I am born in this time because I don't know how they would be able to put up with me, you know, in the last century. Oh, no. Remember that wherever you have been placed, in the hemisphere, that is the best place for you. Right here on Jamdong, where I get all the fresh air. All the sunshine, all the wonderful spring water, all the wonderful earth foods. And I can walk barefoot on the ground and get all my PEMFs because this is where I have been put. Sorry for those people who have temperate climates and most of the time snow cover the ground, they don't get any sunshine and the fresh air not so fresh because the fumes from the factory. But guess what? Come on down to Jamaica and vacation with us where we can show you how you can celebrate life even in your temple climate. Because all you need to do is go on your computer 
or your smartphone, your Blackberries, and whatever else, and log in to reggae2reggae.com. And you can keep it running in your house 24-7. And you'll get the best music, the best programs, the best information on how you can stay right there where you are and celebrate life with me. I don't know what I'm going to have coming up at the end as my closing theme, but I want you to remember that things have got to change because that is the only way we grow. You saw me at the beginning of the program with my Jamaican flag in the middle of my red flag. Let me tell you something, red is one of the colors of life. And when you put it there along with the Jamaican flag, you get all the colors of food. And as we leave, I want to remind you that if you want to be eating right, then you've got to have 60% of your intake green. Then you've got to have 35% of your intake yellow. And we have got to have 15% of your intake red. And once you have that balance in your diet, you will get all the vitamins that you need, all the minerals that you need, all the protein that you need. Protein does not come in brown unless it's the skin of a pea or the skin of a nut, which brown incidentally is a mixture of the three primary colors. So remember, 50% green, 35% yellow, and 15% red. Then you will have all the nutrients that you need. All the vitamins, all the minerals, all the protein, all the chlorophyll, and all the enzymes. So as we move into our next program, we just want to invite you to celebrate life with me on reggae to reggae.com. Remember, you can also scroll down to videos and get all the previous shows. Do give us a call. Do log on to our shows and do email us if there's anything that we can do for you. Shalom, shalom, shalom. Everything in perfect, upright order. Nothing is and nothing broken. It's got to be saying something to me <laughs> sitting on the limb of a tree giving me a sound of sweet melody I guess he's trying to tell me something something that I should know
Since the first public demonstration of radio by Nikola Tesla in 1893, no one ever thought of putting the two hours of music together until we created reggae to reggaecom We're back to the Total Education Celebrity Show on the Total Education Network, TotalTutor.net for more information. Twitter, Total Tutor, Neil S. Haley, Facebook. And I'm really excited to welcome back to the program from the Real Housewives of Miami, Leah Black. And uh, Leah, thanks for calling. And uh, I know that you had a really, really good event that helped raise money. I hope so. We're still organizing it. We have the aftermath now. <laughs> <laughs> Delivering the auction items, collecting the rest of the money, um, you know, organizing the files. It's a big thing. It takes a, about two or three weeks of uh, aftermath to clean up. But, yeah, it went great. We had fun. Everybody had a good time. And, you know, hopefully we made a lot of money. We'll see. All right. So tell us about the event, and then I want to go into some of your upcoming projects after that. But everyone likes to hear about, you know, you did the whole red carpet and all the different things. How did everything go? And I guess the process of planning it, because I remember we were talking, you were still in the final stages of planning. Well, and all that. Yeah, you know, it takes, uh, really, it, it takes months to plan it normally, but this year, because we weren't able to secure the talent until about seven or eight weeks out, we really rushed it, and we just got lucky. We, we were able to just make it happen by really killing ourselves, <laughs> so we spent months looking and digging for talent, but, you know, it wasn't... Um, we weren't able to secure it. And so once you, you until you secure the talent, you can't.